Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Ed, W8EO. Very simple question. Dave, why would RBN, which is the reverse beacon network, I'll explain what that is, why would RBN copy my call and not my friend N4ZKS sent from the same transceiver? What went wrong? Uh, thanks at 73 from Ed W8EO. Um, before we jump into answering this question, I'd like to pay special thank you to Mike Engel. He is one of my most recent patrons and is helping support this channel financially. You too can become a patron. Go to www.patreon.com slash ke0og and find a way that works for you. So let's get to looking at Ed's question. Now I have up on the screen here reverse beacon network and it's constantly changing. This is a reverse beacon network, okay? And what happens is uh, there are multiple receivers around areas that have lots of ham radio operations. And what these do is they receive CW, FT8, let's see, CW, RIDI, PSK31, PSK33, and um, I believe they have some FT8 in here too. There might be a different version that has that, okay. So what they are listening for is either the term CQ, DX, beacon slash B or NCDF, okay? So what you can do uh, very simply is to get on anywhere on the CW frequencies on any band and transmit a uh, like test DE KE0OG, okay? And it can be uh, heard. Now what you see down here are spotters these are people who have radios on right at the moment on this particular band and those who have been spotted and it comes up very very quickly this is in uh, real time up here okay so max rose 10 why don't we go 100 okay now we see lots more spotting and you can see all the things right here now, notice what is here. You've got the spotter, the person spotted, the distance in miles or kilometers, if you want, the frequency, the mode, and whether it was a CQ-type signal or a beacon signal or whatever, and the signal-to-noise ratio at the receiver. This can be very important right here. You can use this for antenna testing, okay, by um, putting up two antennas, and then transmitting your test signal on two frequencies, one for one antenna, one at least two or three kilohertz away on the other antenna, and you can go back and forth and look, make sure you get correlated with the right time, and to see which antenna is better to that receiving location. It'll tell you the speed in words per minute, okay, time, and when seen, okay, and a lot of these are being seen right now. So this is the connection between the spotter and the spotted, okay? And there are many explanations. There's how to spot FT8 and so on. And you can see CW and FT8 on a single, uh, single red uh, trail, 13 bands. So these are different people listening to other people. And when you see two lines out of there, it's probably because that's a spotter and the blue one is the spot head. So it goes back and forth, okay? This is constantly running all the time and you can see what's going on here. Okay, now let me tell you how it works. Okay, the reverse beacon network is a follow-on to the original beacon network. The original beacon network was located in several DX spots around the world, uh, mostly funded, funded by Northern European or um, no. the original 
DX Beacon Network was largely funded by Europeans and Americans, although by quite a few others too. And various hams around the world were asked to put up beacon stations. And these beacon stations would transmit on the hour and uh, then a certain number of seconds past the hour and so on. So you could always hear the independent ones by going to the right time. Now this is very nice, but there's a problem with the reverse beacon net or the regular beacon network in that a lot of these uh, beacons uh, fell into disrepair. Uh, people who had agreed to keep them up uh, passed away. I mean, all kinds of things happened. So they had less and less of a propagation beacon abroad. So some very uh, intelligent person came up with the idea of the reverse beacon network. This would be a series of receivers around the world. And you could transmit your call sign on CW, on any band, and uh, some of these networks would hear you. And you could look in real time to see who heard you, and then you would kind of know that the band was open to that area. Now, the way you got picked up by the reverse beacon network is a little different from using a regular radio. A regular radio only hears a narrow bandwidth of what's going on, and what the reverse beacon network wants to do is get the entire bandwidth. All of the CW, RIDI, FT8, and all of that sort of stuff. And so they'd use software-defined radios like this one right here. This is an SDR Play uh, or SP Duo. It's their top of the line. And this will receive a complete 10 megahertz chunk of bandwidth. So you could get like from... Um, you could get the, the 40 and 30 meter band in that, okay, and you're hearing the whole band. And it's being put out through the USB connection into your computer. Now, the, there's special software that you have to actually buy uh, that will take that entire bandwidth and start sucking signals out of that. Now, what will trigger that? You can send test DE. KE0OG, or you could just call CQ, CQ DE, KE0OG, okay? And this thing would pick that up and put it up as a spot. Meanwhile, you're carrying on your conversation. The next time you call CQ, you'd be picked up again, okay? It might be from a different receiver somewhere quite a ways away. Now, there are some problems with this. First of all, I did my master's thesis on machine decoding a Morse code. And the more I studied it, the harder a problem it became. Uh, it is fairly easy to receive machine sent Morse code where all the timing is perfect. But CW, contrary to what a lot of people say, is not a digital mode, it's an analog mode. The reason it's analog, I mean, you send either on or off, but the timing of the dits is controlled by your hand. And so no two dits will be exactly the same length, and no two DAWs will be exactly the same length, no two spacings will be exactly the same length. And in order to interpret that, that is a tough, tough problem. But what the reverse reverse beacon network software does is it looks for signals that it can decode, okay? And the thing that will trigger it to look is a CQ. That's pretty easy to pick out. Or test, da, dit, did it, dit, da. And it wants really well-sent code. So those who want the best chance of being picked up by the reverse beacon network, will use uh, usually an iambic paddle with a, a keyer, which comes in all modern radios, and the code comes out with each dit and da of exactly the right length. Now, still, even with an iambic keyer in your radio, you can get spacing between the letters that is different from what the machine might expect. Okay, now, 
I know on the ICOM 7300, there is a feature in the keyer that uh, I send what I normally send, and it will send out each word perfectly spaced. Okay, and it kind of, if I hit that keyer too soon, it'll hold it for me. So I get it just right. So it will send out when I use the paddle with it and use the iambic keyer, it will be almost perfect code. Another way to really send perfect code is to go into one of the memories in the radio and put in uh, test, T-E-S-T-D-E-K-E-0-O-G. You don't need to put the K at the end or anything, just K-E-0-O-G. And that code, and tell it to send from the memory, and it will send the entire package absolutely perfectly spaced and the machine at the receiving end that's connected to the wideband radio will pick that up and pop it right up on the reverse beacon network in very nearly re real time. And I've tried this before, it does work. I did a video on the reverse beacon network uh, quite some time ago. In fact, I did two videos on this subject, number 32 and number 384. And if you go to my uh, channel page at uh, youtube.com slash Dave Kassler, uh, you can look those up and, and find a lot more. And I show actually in there an example of the reverse beacon network. Now, the reason that I make this point about perfectly sent code is that it may very well answer the question that we have here. Okay, why would RBN copy my call and not my friend N4ZKS sent from the same transceiver? It is possible with a regular key, a key, it is possible with a regular key a key like this to send perfectly spaced Morse code, but it is nigh unto impossible. Okay, so what is happening here, I guess, I'm guessing, is that one of you sends code slightly different from the way the other of you sends code. For example, if you use the Farnsworth method, where you send each individual letter at 18 words per minute, but put extra spacing between the letters. The reverse beacon network will see that as just individual letters. Okay, you need to get it, the whole thing, at 18 words a minute. Also, if you're sending hand sent code, you can get slight differences in the dits and dots, and that will confuse uh, the machine decoding algorithm. Okay, so what I would suggest that you do is get together with your one transceiver, put two messages into the transceiver. Put a message which says test, and then your call sign, and the other message says test from your friend's call sign. Transmit your test a couple times, you know, every uh, 40 seconds apart, 30 seconds apart, your tests, until it shows up on the network. Okay, then change frequently slightly and send test and the other call sign. You don't need test DE, it's just test and the call sign. And it should pick it up on the reverse beacon network. Now, you might go back and forth between that a few times. Uh, now, this is a way you would test antennas, for example. You test an antenna till you get a signal on the reverse beacon network, write down the signal to noise ratio, change to the other antenna, and change frequency slightly so that the reverse beacon network thinks it's picking up a new signal, and then you can get the, the, uh, the signal to noise ratio reading of that. It's a great way to compare antennas. But remember, if the receiver's in New York, all that measures is the uh, power of your antenna to New York, not to Wisconsin or Florida or anything like that. You have to check the other beacons. And of course, 
propagation changes rapidly uh, during the time of day. All right, so I think that answers your question there, uh, Ed, about reverse beacon networks. Try those things with putting them in memory so you take the code sending human part of it out of the equation and then try those two. Let me know how this comes out um, and see how that works. Now the two videos, again, where I talked about the reverse beacon network are number 32 and number 384. So Ed, thank you very much for your uh, question. And so there you have it. If you've watched this far, you may want to help support this channel financially. You can do so easily by going to decastlercom slash support. Take a look at the tip jar there. Throw a little something in the tip jar. It's a one-time, not a continuing thing, but a one-time good deal. And until we next meet, 73.